Thank you, uh, Shelley. My name is Bill Bramel, and I'm an ecologist with Mosaic. My first experience with burrowing owls was about 20 years ago. It was in the southwest Florida area. I was kind of new to the area, and I had started a consulting job in the Fort Myers area. And uh, the guy sent me out on a project. He said, this is a no-brainer project. It's Page Field, which if you know Fort Myers, it's in the middle of pretty much downtown uh, Fort Myers next to the General Aviation Airport. I said, look, there's no environmental issues. Just go out there, do a brief site visit. So I went out there. And again, I'm new to the area. And lo and behold, I see these little owls. And they're going in and out of a burrow. And I'm freaking out. Never had no idea what was going on. I rushed back to the office. I figured I'd discovered something. Guys, you're not going to believe this. I saw owls, and they're going down in a hole. You've got burrowing owls. So that was my introduction to burrowing owls um, in the southwest Florida area. But today I'm going to talk about our burrowing owl translocation program that we've implemented at Mosaic. It's um, an ongoing project for about 10 years. I'm going to go over kind of the broad overview and objectives of the program, talk a little bit about the recipient site, then go over some of our methodology and results, and then finally uh, follow up with some lessons learned. I'd like to stress this is a really a, it's an experimental program. So um, every translocation we do, we seem to learn a little bit more. We um, involve experts from around the country and try and glean insight from their experiences they're having out west. Um, well, anyway, currently uh, the Florida burrowing owl is a species of special concern listed by the FWC. Um, its current policy is to collapse the burrows where they exist in the non-nesting season. Um, so as you probably know also, FWC is going through a, a pretty extensive reclassification um, of state listed species and it's called the Imperiled Species Management Plan. As a result of this effort, uh, I think the burrowing owl will likely get uplisted to threatened and hopefully some of the research we're doing can help inform some of the man uh, management decisions moving forward with the burrowing owl. Um, kind of looking at our goals when we wanted to um, embark on this program, we really wanted to see if you could establish a colony on reclaimed land. So once we figured out that that was doable, then we wanted to glean some insight from, you know, habitat usage. Could we in, in improve our reclamation techniques, increase dispersal, and increase retention rates of the owls on our sites? This kind of shows you where the uh, recipient site is located. It's in southwest Polk County, um, kind of in the Four Corners area of Manatee, Hardy, and Hillsborough County, probably about 70, 75 miles north of here. This is an aerial showing the recipient site. This is formerly mined land. Um, it was mined in the late 80s, reclaimed in the early 90s. The majority of the reclamation work there was pasture. So. Um, north and south of the water feature you see here, which is, this is uh, basically Paint Creek and the headwaters of Paint Creek here. So the boxes on there represent about 40 acres where the translocations have been focused over the 10-year program. And basically, again, it's improved pasture, mostly bahia grass, um, scattered other um, native grasses and pogons. Um, the methodology we employ is basically, um, it's carpet trapping the burrow, the, uh, the owls at their burrow. See, these, these traps are basically little wire mesh grids with little slip knots on them. We spend a couple hours beforehand looking and seeing where the owls are roosting throughout the course of the day, and we try and set these traps where they're most le uh, likely to land and trap them. Once they're trapped, we take uh, vital statistics, we weigh them, measure them, wingspan, we take blood samples to determine sex. Um, they're transported to the recipient site. On average, our recipient sites are about 10 to 15 miles from the donor site, um, and they're released into an enclosure area. Before we build an enclosure, and I'll get to the enclosure a little bit later, we uh, construct an artificial burrow system. Um, this burrow design has gone through um, different implications or different modifications. The one main one being this, you see a 90 degree bend in the burrow right there. And what we discovered in scoping hundreds of burrows um, before excavation, almost every one of them had a 90 degree turn and a very few of them were straight. So we've incorporated that into our design. These are the recently, uh, the release enclosures. These are fairly large structures, about 50 feet uh, wide, 10, 12 feet, I mean 50 feet long, 10 feet wide, 12 feet high. Um, the purpose of the enclosure is to break their site fidelity. Burrowing owls are very site-specific. Um, 
and you try and break that bond to their um, donor site by keeping them in these enclosures. The original um, program, we kept them in 30 days. Uh, the more research we've done in consulting with owl experts out west, we're trying to keep them in there a little bit longer, about 50 to 60 days, again, to increase that um, risk or chance that they'll go back to the donor site by breaking that strong site fidelity. Um, while they're in the enclosures, this is a pretty labor-intensive process. The owls are daily, uh, monitored daily and reported to daily to FWC. Um, they're fed every day. We feed them two dead mice and live crickets. For the first couple of weeks or so, we'll give them live mice to kind of stimulate the feeding of dead mice, and we really had no issues with them taking to the, the feeding. So they, they will feed in the enclosure just fine, and they're still monitored from afar after the feedings are done. So to try and limit the human disturbance, um, throughout the course of the day. We also monitor the owls post-release, and this is, can, again, can take up to 30 to 35 days. We try and monitor through the nesting season, and we're, what we're trying to do there is figure out, you know, dispersal patterns, retention rates, figure out uh, success of fledgings. Um, kind of a brief history of the program. Again, it's been a 10-year program. We've not translocated owls every year. We've done, I believe, five translocations. Through those course of translocations, we've uh, got 52 owls to the site and fledged 56 successfully over the 10-year period on five, about five translocations. The current recipient site demographics, again, it's on about 45 to 50 acres total of um, where we're kind of releasing them. We have currently 10 adults, and those consist of four breeding pairs, two unmated pairs that may mate you know, at some date in the future. In this last nesting season, we fledged eight juveniles. Um, we, we only did one translocation this year, and ironically, um, it didn't consist of a bird on Mosaic property. We got called by Audubon. A waif owl that ended up at West Shore Mall in the parking lot in a dumpster area. Don't know where the owl came from. Audubon got in contact with us, and we kind of scrambled around and modified our permit and erected enclosure and got that owl to our recipient site. Again, this is an experimental translocation, so we're always kind of learning. I talked a little bit about the modified ABS system, the artificial burrow system. The old system, again, it was just kind of a straight corrugated pipe, and it went to a smaller nest chamber with a pipe up top. And what we found is that, you know, that, that would be covered up, and then you would put a cap on the top of that pipe. Unfortunately, it kind of led in too much light, and some of the research out west had suggested the owls like it really dark, so that, again, that led to this design right here, and very little light gets into that. That would be their nesting chamber. Um, the release enclosures have gotten bigger over the years. Originally, they were a lot smaller. They had a flatter roof design. We've added the arch roof design to give them a little more room um, to move around. We've also tried to space the enclosures to mimic how close the burrows are at the donor site. So we go out and we fig figure out measurements where the burrows are at the donor site. We try and space the enclosures accordingly. We've also added hand auger burrows into the enclosure, so we've found that owls will use both. If we hand auger, hand auger a burrow or do it with an ABS, though they're perfectly fine using either or. For the first couple of programs, uh, translocations, we had coyote problems. Um, coyote populations are getting bigger in Central Florida. So our initial attempt was to put hog wire fencing around the entire recipient site. That really was not that successful keeping the coyotes out. So then we went to putting a wire mesh over the ABS. And again, that had limited results. So what we found was we introduced donkeys to the site. It eliminated the coyote predation problem almost unilaterally. The other thing we did in conjunction with that is we reintroduced cattle. Before this, we were managing the land basically uh, mechanically, lawnmowers, tractors. So you had a lot more human interaction and disturbance. We introduced cattle, and they act as a good management tool because the owls like the st structure somewhat low. They don't like it overgrown, so the cows help with that. And they've also helped um, bring in some of the more, uh, their insect prey base um, by the dung. So we're kind of getting that prey base for their food source up. We've also introduced, this is actually, these metal things here, they're cattle excluders, and that was actually a design that came up with our, one of our contractors that's doing the work. Um, kind of keeps them from trampling the burrow. And I think we've had IFAS out to look at these, and I think they're looking to 
uh, put them, uh, establish them with uh, large landowners that have burrowing houses on cattle ranches. Now that sums up my presentation. I'm going to try to have a slight, uh, small video. This video is from our, I believe, our third translocation in 2011. Um, and it kind of highlights some of the things I've talked about. That's the primary right by the orange flag. Today we are removing some burrowing owls from a, from a mining unit area that's going to be mined up here in the future. It's possible I saw it over. Burrowing owls are protected species, so in the process of mining, which is an otherwise legal activity, if you impact protected species, you have to develop some kind of plan that, that compensates for that impact. Mosaic is committed to developing wildlife programs that benefit the wildlife. And you can see one bird a little farther to the left. So what we developed was a um, experimental translocation program where we um, uh, humanely trap a burrowing owl at its burrow. The shrubby thing and then you can see the, the flag way back there. It's kind of in between both of those. Well, the trick is to, to find out first where the owls like to roost. Uh, they, they land on the ground, they tend to be on the ground. And once we know where those sites are, uh, we can put special carpets that have nooses on it. So these are the noose traps that are just slit knots. They really don't mind the traps. They'll land right on top of them. The trick is to flush the owls, make a move, and then when they come back to their favorite roosting sites, they get caught in those traps. Their flight distance is like about 50 feet, so they'll allow us to get that close. And we can do that very safely without any risk of injury. All right, got him. Got him? Yeah. Hey there, Bubba. All right, so you want to do this on the left leg. Correct. Uh, and then we take a few measurements. You're a beast. 161. And so we ban the birds, and the idea is to crimp it down as well as possible. We want to be um, uh, good neighbors to not only our community, but the wildlife on our property. I mean, trapping owls is always uh, unpredictable. Uh, today we had a red-tailed hawk try and get one of the owls. We were in the process of trapping. The owl escaped down its burrow. You want to try to reach in there? We were waiting for him to come out. Got him? Yep. Got him? Yep. yep. Is everything? Let me get a right grip on him. Okay. Hold it okay. Got him. Move the trap back. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Releasing them is the easy part. Getting them to stay where we release them is the harder part. Ready? The goal is to have that animal establish a home territory and colony and, and reproduce at a new site well away from mining activities so it can set up a whole new permanent home. So we actually construct these large enclosures and we put the owls in there and leave them there for as many as 30 days. Uh, the idea is for them to be able to see their surroundings, get accustomed to the burrows that are there, uh, and so that when we eventually release them from the enclosure, they're quite content to stay at the site we've released them at. We're hoping that this um, experimental translocation program will um, be successful. We have had some success with it, and makes it makes me feel good uh, to know that we're helping the wildlife um, and, and doing responsible relocations and taking care of the animals. All right, well, thank you. Uh, I have a few minutes, so if anyone has any questions, we'd be more than happy to take a question or two. Yes, sir. It's about 72, 73 is our retention rate. It's tough to tell. Um, you know, we do band all the owls, but, you know, we, we get some dispersed and we, we're, we can't track them. We've tried radio telemetry, and that's had limited success. We're trying to, you know, figure out better ways to track them, I guess. So, yes. Yes, that does happen. We've had the last translocation, one of the burrows, one of the owls did go back. That one was that one was on the forty. I think it was forty-five, forty-six days. Yeah. So. Yes.
Yes, yes. It's a it's a established breeding population we have. So last breeding season, which was um, you know, a couple months ago, we pledged eight juveniles. Okay, thank you.